afternoon. I mean, it is actually do it. I just look at my watch. It's five past two. And I appreciate you people to watch Gino's show. But the reason that I have an, a guest here is because I met him a couple of years ago. And he told me a little story. And he will tell you now in his own way his story. So I want him himself to introduce himself. Would you be kind enough <laughs> to tell your name, your last name, and then you continue and tell me a story why you're here? Sure. Um, Go ahead. Before I begin, I would like to say thank you very much, Gino, for having me on your show. It's you know, a privilege. I have, I have a great respect for you. Thank you very much for your service. And um, I've heard great things about this man. Um, I heard that your middle name is really the man, the, the myth, and the legend. Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> I know quite a, quite a few people maybe when they see me that say, how you doing, Gino? And I never met him before, but <laughs> it's not my fault. <laughs> well, um, thank you for having me. And, uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. thank you very much for that uh, warm introduction. As you know, uh, my name is Dean Tran. I, uh, I served four years on the planning board, six terms on the Fitchburg City Councilor, and uh, two term in the State Senate. Now, uh, when I was elected to the uh, Fitchburg City Council, I was the first uh, minority elected in the city and I became the first Vietnamese American to be elected in this state. And when I was elected uh, to the uh, state senate, not only I became the first minority elected in the district, but I was also uh, the first Vietnamese American to be elected to the state legislature, the first refugee and Asian born to be elected to the state senate. Now prior to that, I have a pretty nice background that you, you just talked about. Um, you know, um, and I alluded to uh, thanking you for your service because, you know, I was born to a 25-year South Vietnamese um, Army officer. And uh, my mom was a uh, small business owner back in uh, the country of Vietnam. And um, I was born towards the end of the war. And, of course, you know, Vietnam was taken over by communism. and. Um, no, it was a war-torn country. Uh, we fled. My father, be, being an army officer, uh, was got, went into hiding because, uh, of course, you know, um, if they caught him, they would have they put him, in, either killed him or put him in what they call, quote-unquote, the re-education camp, oh. which is a, pretty much a, a torture camp. Unbelievable. Right? You know, so, we, people don't realize that we're all children of God. It's, we only have one father, remember? Correct. And you're just like, just like us. I mean, you're, you're just a, a brother. Mm -hmm. I don't know what people make it such a fuss about different country, different... I'm from Venice, Italy. I mean, my father used to say, we are all human beings. We have to be nice to each other, love each other, not just criticize each other, right. not hurting each other. And, uh, you know, my father was right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's um, when the war ended and the country w was in chaos and South Vietnam was taken over by communism, yeah. a lot of people fled the country. And those people were known as the boat people. And my family and I were amongst, among those people. We I were understand. known as the boat people. Uh, we were fortunate enough to have enough money to get the family on a small wooden boat. Unbelievable. You no, know, and, um, and we fled the country in search of freedom. Um, I was told, I was very young, I was an infant. My parents told me that we spent well over a dozen days um, in that boat on, in the ocean, oh my God. Uh, drifting, and people were dying around us. Oh my God. Uh, they perished, but we were fortunate. God was looking down um, yes, upon my family. And uh, my, my parents, along with my other f five siblings, we survived. And uh, we were blessed enough for, for the uh, boat to drift um, to a neighboring country. And so, you know, as a toddler, I spent my toddler years in one of the roughest refugee camps in the world. Wow. You know, we, um, I can still smell the, the uh, fumes from the uh, septic trucks. Oh and I can God. still hear 
the noises from uh, those trucks uh, going by as we live in those camps. And I was a toddler back then. Right, so uh, I spent another two and a half years in uh, that refugee camp while we were waiting for our green cards to be approved to emigrate to this country. And the you right came way. legally, too. <coughs> we came legally. Yeah. You know, um, and, and that, that's, that's the great part, was that um, there's a process in place for people to come over to this country. This is the greatest country in the world. It is. And, um, and if we had to endure two and a half years in one of the roughest refugee camps in the world, it was worth it. So uh, my, my parents and I and my family emigrated to this country in 1980. We were sponsored by a Catholic priest in mm. the town of Clinton, Massachusetts, wow. where I called my first real home, Gino. 42 years. That's what it, 42 years? Mm -hmm. I've been married 42 years. <laughs> So uh, when I came over to this country, I was uh, at the age of four and a half. So as you can see, the reason why I called Clinton, Massachusetts my first real home, because I've never had a real first home uh, prior yeah, to that. Yeah. Because uh, as an infant, we were in hiding. And as a toddler, I, was, I spent my toddler years in the, uh, the, refi the uh, refugee camp. And now, um, now I, we have the opportunity to live in the greatest country in the world. Um, where we are afforded so much freedoms under the Constitution. And sometimes I get frustrated because, you know, uh, in my travels, not just across the state, but ac across the country, to hear and to see so many people take freedoms for granted. I know. You know um, we went through such hardship to have the freedoms we have now. You served and risked your life to provide the freedoms that I have and so many have taken those freedoms for granted. I know, people don't realize that. Freedom is that you can do what you can, but respect, consideration for other people, mm -hmm. and love each other, that's freedom. Right, and you know the freedoms that we have in this country also afford people the opportunities. Absolutely. And yes. those opportunities to, to be able to achieve the American dream. Not a lot of countries where they have that dream that we're oh. talking about. In this country, we have, that, we have the, uh, the American dream. And we, want, I, we hope you being there, you might be able to help other people to understand. Not because you are in the United States, you can do what you can. You have to respect, you have to love each other and they cons be considerate. Don't hate anybody. That's what freedom is. Right. You know? So I, I, I cherish the freedoms that we have, Gino, and I have achieved the American dream. You know, um, and it is possible for anyone to achieve the American dream, as long as you work hard. That is true. And it's all about responsibility, holding yourself accountable for your actions, and just continue to work hard. You know, I have overcame so many obstacles in my life. I overcame discrimination and racism. I have overcame, uh, you know, actions forced upon me when I got into polit uh, the, political the political field. People have told me that I can't do this, I can't do that because of my race, because of how, what, what how I look. What race actually, which a lot of people would say, oh, little, nice little color in my face will be beautiful. They are probably jealous. What race? There is no race. Mm -hmm. We all son and daughter from Correct. God. Well, that's because, you know, when you become a threat to someone's control uh, or some entity's control. Nobody has control. They, Only correct. God has control. I absolutely agree <laughs> with you. Uh, nobody so. has control. Mm -hmm. Even Congress, so it's only temporarily control. Right. <laughs> and that's, that, that is just part of um, an obstacle, right? Right. Uh, something that you, everyone needs to overcome. Yes, true. And I overcame mm -hmm. that and uh, achieved many things that were told of me that I couldn't achieve, including uh, becoming a city councilor and then a state senator. And now we're... The in future congressman in this district. Right. And, and 
That's freedom. In what country on this planet where you are a refugee and an immigrant and have the opportunity to run for the United States Congress? It's because your intention is to help others. Right. Not and to take away from them. And that is... That, that is freedom. That is one of the main reasons why I'm running, Gino. Right. And I that know. is, you know, I am so fearful of allowing this country to become the communist country that my parents and I fled from. No, it's not, never going to happen. We... It, it will happen if we have oh, the wrong yes. people in place. And but with, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's never going to happen. And we, it's never going to happen because we have people like you. People who have risked your life to make sure that this country Stay stays the, with, liberty. The, uh, with liberty and freedom the way we, it is now today. Um, we're, seeing it, we're seeing it happen slowly now. We've seen it through the pandemic where people's rights and constitutional freedoms were taken away from them. Yes. When the government Take over. tells you, mm -hmm. Gino, how many people you can have in your house. There's no freedom. There's no freedom. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're seeing that in our economy now. The economy is a disaster. Uh, people are having an incredible tough time uh, providing meet. for the family yes. and making ends meet, yes. putting food on their table, having to decide whether they should eat or should heat their home. Um, and government has created that environment. I know. And we cannot allow that to happen. The biggest mistake they made, you know, and I don't hate them. I just a little disappointed mm -hmm. because we're supposed to understand each other. Maybe they will understand when the election goes the other way. Maybe they will say, we, we, we did wrong. And maybe they have to admit it. And they will, no, they might have another op, you know, possibility to understand that. If they do, they might get lucky. Mm -hmm. But right now, unfortunately, I'm a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. And I hope people like you, they come in and in your politics, they are here to speak for us. You, not only you, everybody that's going to be voted in okay, in this election, they're not doing for themselves. They wanted to speak for us. Right. That's what we need to have. And the, only, and, and the other reason why I'm running also, Gino, is that our district is very diverse. It is. Diverse in race, ethnicity, age, gender, gender economic status, yes. and uh, you know, backgrounds. And I can relate to almost everybody in the district. And so when you elect a representative to represent your views and your beliefs, you want someone who you can relate to. Right. And I am that person. And uh, I hope I would get that opportunity to make sure that we as a country go back to where freedom is the most important okay. aspect of our life. And that our country is safe and that we have a strong economy so that mm -hmm. way that people can go to work and provide for right. their families and pay for right. pay their food and pay their bills and that we have a future built on freedoms for our children and last but not least we have to protect the parental rights and protect people's constitutional freedoms That's true. because that is so important and we have to also respect not only us but we have to respect people in authority like the police people state troopers they they are just to help us mm -hmm. not uh, they every night some somebody is being hurt somebody's being killed you know it, it hurts right here oh absolutely you know what i mean i, I feel so bad there is no reason to do that mm -hmm. no reason i uh, you know I, I tell people all the time that no matter what party uh political party affiliation you have when it comes down to it there's only two issues that are most important to you and your family. One is the economy, and two is public safety. Right. Yeah. You know, correct. because if you uh, if you don't feel safe right. walking down your neighborhood or your community or traversing across the uh, Commonwealth, if you don't I, feel safe, I know. then really you don't have a life. I know. And 
you know, we have people who are intention, intentional, intentionally um, trying to take away public safety, and this nonsense about defunding the police is no. just absurd because law enforcement is there to protect us. And they, another thing is they're, they're there to protect us, but they have to help each other too to protect themselves. The question is, sometimes you don't. If you do something, something wrong, I'm gonna sue you and do this. People should have respect. They don't have to use their gun to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Just have a little respect. They might have a different view of you. You know what I mean? We all human. We all make mistakes. We believe in this. I believe in a flower that is real. Somebody says, no, it don't, looks nice, but it's not real. But the question is, don't take advantage of the situation. Right. Try to mingle, try to divide, not divide, but trying to unify one party with the other. Help each other. And I, Make I, it the best. I completely agree with you. And that respect extends to respecting each other's point of view. It's true. Right? Um, we live in a society nowadays, and, in, and, and I think it all derive from bad politicians and the media where they suppress opposing yes. viewpoints. Yes. Yes. And when that happens, it sends a message to one group of people that they are more important than another group of, another people. Group of people. And we, we should not allow that to happen. No. Everyone should be, should, be like. created, uh, should be treated equally, equally. and have um, respect for each other. They will understand when you go. Remember that. I have a feeling that, uh, like I say, this is Gino's show, I invite a lot of people. For some reason, they say yes, and then they don't come. But uh, I, I respect that you were able to come and tell me a story. But remember, the people have the choice. So when they, you, they appoint you as a congressman, it's because they understand they were trying to give a message to the other side. Not because they wanted them to be hate. We don't hate anybody. But they will say, maybe we went too far, mm -hmm. too far to the left. Let's meet each Let's meet together. Mm -hmm. Let's help each other. Don't try to help yourself because you have the power. Try to meet together and try to help, love each other to a point where you unify the party, not only the Republic or the Democrat, the, you know, the individual, the, you know, the, there's so many different parts of the, the, <laughs> of the, of the public. The, the one wants to be Democrat, the Republican, you, you know. Mm -hmm. Try to, they talk to each other. Yeah. Not call. I understand that pe some people they call other people names. Why? Mm -hmm. That is not right. Yeah, I um, I I invite people to look at my background and my record of serving the people. You know, um, I I'm married and I have four children. That all four children. Beautiful. Uh, public uh, school educated, and um, I am very involved in my community. You know, with my unbelievable, crazy, hectic schedule, I still find time to coach youth sports. Beautiful. Because I want to give back to yeah. the community yeah. and make sure that yeah. the young, young generation have a, have a role model and be able yeah. to uh, you know, participate in sports and take, um, you know, be active in the community. And also, Gino, I have a very, very strong record on serving and working for the people. Um, I have always set, my, set aside my, my values and beliefs so I can serve the people. And when I um, was elected to the state senate, I promised the people that I would leave my very successful private sector career and serve them, serve. and I did. And uh, I live up to every promises that I have made uh, to the people. And that's what people want to see. And that's, and, and that's the kind of representative that the people deserve. Right, right. I understand the other side, uh, whatever. The question is, they will know you. They will understand. Who knows? They might maybe steal some of the goodness of you. They said, maybe if he can do it, we can do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Wouldn't it be beautiful on me? Well, you know, um, I served um, on the city council and the state senate, and, um, and it's easier to say than do uh, of what you just said. Uh, to some politicians, they have a very difficult time on setting aside special interest groups uh, or special interest um, 
uh, things that they want to do rather than serving the people. Right. And uh, that has never been a case with me. That's good. It's very easy for me to put the people first and mm -hmm. foremost. And I have a strong record of that uh, on both level, on the municipal, local level, and the state level. And now they're going to be, they're going to watch you and say, he's a, sang he's a congressman now. Maybe we learn something from him. And no matter who they are, you be a gentleman as you are now, and just say we should combine our idea together. We don't. We should not call our name this, that, this, and that. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be cop patriotic. Mm -hmm. As long as you are a patriot, they are patriot. Why? Why in, incline the division? Oh, I'm better than he is. Oh, me. Um, right. No, you just a gentleman. And they, you find on the other side other gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And they're going to pick up from you. I'm it's too, you. It's too often that politicians uh, get elected and they become very partisan. And they follow the leadership and disregard their service to the people. Right. You know, um, I'm not going to be that person. I know. I know that I have a constituency that I need to serve, which is the third con uh, congressional, congressional district here. Industrial. And when I go to the U.S. Congress, I have to work with everybody across the country, and we have to, we have to compromise, and I will work with them to make sure that my district and the state of Massachusetts I served. Uh, and, and at the same time, we need to, I need to compromise with other people and yes. make sure that they get what they want for yes. their people. Yes. And I have no problem. That will happen. Remember that. Thank you. Gino Shaw will say, how did he know? They're going to be jealous. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, you are a nice gentleman. I, I'm, I think I met your wife and, uh, on the other party. Uh, where well, they had a bu beautiful festivity, and you saw me dancing, did you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, my, um, my family, my wife and my children are very supportive of what I do. But sometimes they question why I do it. And, if, uh, and I, my lesson to them is that when you see something is wrong, you want to fix you it. You have to get involved, yes. and you have to be part of change. Yes. Because if you don't be part of change, you will not have a solution and you can't fix the problem. That is true. Right? Um, and you, as I mentioned earlier, Gino, now I am the first Asian American in this state. Believe it or not, 2022, I am the first Asian American to be on a general ballot to run they, for the U.S. Congress. But they be jealous. Don't worry about it. Tell but, them not, not to but, be jealous. <laughs> but to my point is, if I don't do it and help represent the, a the, the minority district. group and represent uh, this, the uh, silent voice, the right. people who don't have a voice, right, right. then who would? So yeah, um, yeah, I always teach my, my kids that they have to get involved and if they see something wrong, they have to be part of change. They will. They got a good father. And just like you, Gino, you know, I, I, I am so grateful for your service. I am so grateful that you are still here with us after risking your life to make sure that people like me is over here in this country and um, have the freedoms that I have. And without people like you, we wouldn't make it. We don't have the freedoms we have and I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you and being on your show. So thank you. No, no, it's my privilege, my privilege. I, it will be, this is the first phase, but remember, when you become also, and you will become it, you, when you have time, we don't want to take you away from discussion in the Congress. No, you, you, you're supposed to be there. Whenever they let you go, and everybody else go here and there, you come, you come back here, mm -hmm. and you tell me another story. Absolutely. When I was in the State Senate, I said to people, my office is not my office. It's your office. So when I become your next U.S. congressman. My offices are not my offices. They are yours. And uh, the people in the district are more than welcome anytime 
to uh, come to me and come to my office and visit me. And matter of fact, I, I invite everybody to come down That's good. to Washington, D.C. If I do decide to go, uh, do I know this gentleman? Hmm. Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> you will as phenomena. Remember, Congress is only two years. And then when the people understand what you're doing, mm -hmm. the other side says, you know something? I think I better understand. I think I better copy him. I want to be just like him. I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of people like that. And I can't mention any name. Many, many, many people from the other side, even though I never knew, they talked to me. They said, you know what, Gino? I understand. I'm, I'm going to try the other side. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? The election is going to be won by the Republican. Right. And we're seeing this happening. We're seeing this happening across the country. Yeah. Where, you know, um, certain people are uh, affiliated with a certain party and they're, see they're seeing things not working out. They're seeing a bad economy. They're seeing the country moving in the wrong direction. And so they have changed their party affiliation. Yes, they many do. have changed to unenrolled, yes. and many have changed to be Republicans. Yes, and um, you know, the Republicans in this state of Massachusetts are wonderful. I can tell you that I've I've worked with so many I Republican so many and people. Republican candidates. They are so diverse in this election, mm -hmm. and they are for the people. Mm -hmm. They have nothing to gain by running for these offices. I, I have a wonderful private sector career. I have nothing to gain by becoming the next U.S. congressman because my pay right now is higher than, is higher than what the uh, U.S. congressman earns. But you, but you, because you don't do it for the money. I don't you do it for the money. You want to give back. Correct. Indirectly, everybody's trying to give back. Everybody, even from the other side. The question is, we don't know which one it is, but nevertheless, I'm sure they understand that. And there's some of them to give back. Mm -hmm. Too often, Gino, uh, many politicians get into this higher elected office and they want to become millionaires and they do become millionaires yeah. because passing these bills have a drastic impact, whether it's negative or positive, on our economy. I know. And, and it propels certain companies. And these politicians pass these bills for those reasons. And we see them. We, we see inside stock trading violations all the time. Uh, some of those people will, will understand that it's not the way to go because sooner or later you're going to lose it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think your image in, a, in Congress is going to make a lot of... And you say, you know something? You have a complaint, go see Gino's show. He'll tell you about me. Mm -hmm. uh, that means about you. What a nice gentleman you are. You're a father, you're a, a husband, and you're giving yourself in a new country that you respect and you love. That's what everybody should do. There's people, they are born here. They go in the other direction. I don't understand why. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Everybody, I mean, when I, I mean, my family came here and I was a little kid, you know, a young kid. And, and my papa says, you know something, son? You are very lucky. I said, why? Because you are in a, in a place that nobody can be here unless they are invited. And it's that's, changed since then. It has changed. It's changed dramatically. Yeah, yeah, drastically. And I hope Gino. it goes back the other way. I, I remember the time when, you know, we promote hard work in order to achieve the American dream. And nowadays, the younger generations don't believe in hard work anymore. And that is because we have a government and a society that advocate for Laziness, for the yeah. lack, of, uh, lack of better word. But it doesn't work. And they created entitlements pro uh, and all these programs where you don't have to work hard for them. It's not right. But we have to go back, you to go back. and promote hard mm -hmm. work because yeah. that, it, it creates, hard work creates um, character. Character. And it makes you um, strong. strong as well as, you know, The things that you achieve, you you like it more. You you you. Uh, what is that word that I'm looking for? You um, like if you ex expect it 
to re, to re, regret that mm -hmm. you get it and you want to give it back. That's what it's all right, about. Right, right. Uh, you know, when you work hard for something and you yeah. earn it. And then you say, that person, elderly, I have enough. Maybe I can help them. That's mm -hmm. what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Not to say, oh, I take it's all my, my, my. You can't take it with you. Right. Because sooner or later, God takes you, says, hey, the trip is done. Come, I want you. Mm -hmm. And then what do you do with the, all the money you have, millions of dollars? Just to say you're a millionaire, you help other people, they need it. There's a lot of people that say, Gino, I'm sorry to tell you that, but would you believe I don't have any meal for four days? Oh, jeez. I says, where you live? Says, and then it came to a point where the pandemic came alone. I, I helped one family, and before you know, I had, what, 28 family. And I went to different places, churches, to make sure they have a meal for, for the day. I mean, that's what America is all about, helping each other. Right. Not to say, hey, I, I don't care if you don't have anything, as long as I got much. Yeah, the, the, the lesson on helping each other really comes from family value. Yes. To Gino. You're right. And that is something that we've lost in the society. But I will and get we, it back. And we need to bring that back. We got and it. we need to instill family values into the next generation and yes. our children. When you are in Congress, five minutes, just give them a little lesson. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they need it. <laughs> they will listen because you are a congressman. If I go there and, and speak, you are out of order, Gino. I'm sorry. The door is over there. Yes, sir. Bye. But you are a congress. Mm -hmm. In five minutes, he says, you know, we're supposed to help each other. We can do what we can on to a certain point. And then we have to help to a point where he can help himself. Right. Not just take, take, take. You have to earn it. If it's different. If you, you're in the military, you come home, you have no legs, no arm. The poor guy, he did his duty. He risked his life to protect us. Of course you have to help him. You don't have to give him millions of dollars. But you have to make them comfortable. Correct. That's what all, love is all about. Mm -hmm. Respect each other for what they do. Yeah, well, our country is a very sympathetic country. It certainly and is. We, and we help each other. And that's, that's the same concept should apply to every level of government, uh, especially um, on the federal level in the U.S. Congress. I know. Because you need a majority of people working together. Right to pass any legislation. That's true. And you can't do it by yourself, and you can't do it with, with a small group of people who are, um, who are partisan know. and they hateful already, towards. Right, they already know. know what they want to do. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, you, you have the right, like I said, five minutes, every time you have a, an opportunity in a Congress, just five minutes is good, mm -hmm. five minutes. It's just they wish somebody will tell them that we supposed to. I'm, I'm very different from many politicians. I'm glad. And that is, I have a background where I have the experience of working with people from every back, Beautiful. every ethnicity, every background you can think of. You know, being a private sector where I've managed people and, pro and projects across the, uh, the globe, uh, communicating, interacting with people of various languages and uh, ethnicity. And I plan on bringing that experience to the U.S. Congress and being able to work with everybody That's and, good. and uh, to be able to serve do. my district and my state. I'm, I know that you will do that. I appreciate it. My beautiful people, I hope are watching. I, and do you were able to understand what he was talking about? He's running, but the question is he's not running just to say I'm a congressman. He's running to represent us, all of you, and myself too. So that's what you have to do. If you have the opportunity to go to vote, you, you know, don't think twice. I mean, you, you have the freedom to vote for who you, do you want. But the question is, what happened if it, the vote went to the wrong place and then instead of getting better, it's getting worse? You have the free will. God gave you the free will, so don't, have, don't cry. I'm just going to suggest if you have some sympathy and understand what this gentleman is telling us a story 
a true story, you say, you know what? Why don't we give him a chance? After all, it's only two years. And if you like him, you keep him for another two. If you like him, you keep him. To a point where he says, I did my best. But if he's going to say, I'm going to go there and be like a, oh, emperor. I'm going to have the fortune. I'm going to have the command. He's not going for that. He's a humble individual. So if you have time, go and vote on November 8th. I am too. I don't even tell him who I'm going to vote for him. Maybe because I don't like his shoes. I don't know. But that's my privilege. But the question is, if you understand what he was talking about, give him an opportunity. And may God bless you. And this is Gino's show. And you can watch it in 10 different channels. You have a good day and God bless you. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you, sir. And God bless you too.